So, in this video, we can discuss the uh, various applications of Gauss law. In the last video, we actually calculated the electric field or electric flux density at a point P uh, distant R from a point charge Q. Okay, so as continuation to that, now uh, we will uh, discuss the electric field or flux density at a point P due to a line charge. So, in this figure you can see an infinite line, uh, it is marked in red in that figure, it is an infinite line charge. So, a line charge is represented by the charge density along unit length, charge along unit length that is uh, the charge density rho L and its meter, uh, its unit will be coulomb per meter, rho L unit is coulomb per meter. So, in this figure we are assuming that there is an infinite line of uniform charge along Z axis and now we are asked to find the uh, flux density vector d at a point p. Okay, so to find the flux density at a point p and to apply Gauss law, we are first trying to find the Gaussian surface and the Gaussian surface is marked as a cylinder equidistant from the line charge and that is marked in that blue, that blue cylinder that can be considered as a Gaussian surface. So, after that you can apply the Gauss law. So, you might be remembering Gauss law. Gauss law states that psi is equal to Q enclosed. Okay, so first you have to evaluate the left uh, part of it and then the right part of it. So, psi means it is surface integral of d dot ds. Okay, so here you know that when you consider the cylinder or the Gaussian surface, always it will be radiating outwards or the direction will be d rho. So, this can d can be written as d rho a rho dot this is the d because it does not have any other command. This completely uh, focused radially outward. So, it will be d rho a rho dot and what about ds? ds means it is in uh, except rho the other two coordinates that will be phi z. So, the corresponding ds will be d phi d z. So, correspondingly rho d phi into d z into unit vector a rho. So, this is the product of d dot ds, d rho a rho dot rho d phi d z a rho. Rho d phi corresponds to displacement due to d phi. So, taking the dot product and taking the surface integral you get d rho rho d phi d z and applying the uh, limits for uh, you are just assuming the length to be l. So, z will vary from 0 to L and phi will be varying from 0 to 2 pi and on substituting you get d rho rho phi in the limit 0 to 2 pi and z from 0 to L. When applying you get it will be 2 pi rho L d rho. So, this will be the answer of surface integral of d dot ds. And now Q enclosed. In the last case it was a point charge. So, Q itself is a charge. But here you are considering an infinite line charge with charge density rho L. So, to get the total charge it will be rho L into L. So, here L is Z is varying from 0 to small letter L. If it is capital L, 0 to capital L. So, that applying the limit itself integral d z from 0 to Z. 0 to L you get rho L into L. Now you have to equate these two. You will get rho L into L is equal to 2 pi rho L into d rho. So you will be getting d rho as rho L by 2 pi rho. So vector d will be rho L by 2 pi rho a rho and electric field E will be to get E you have to divide D with epsilon. So, it will be rho L by 2 
pi epsilon rho into unit vector a rho. So in this case, uh, we are considering an infinite sheet of uniform charge. In the last case, it was infinite line charge and the charge density was given by rho L, that is coulomb per meter. Here it is a sheet of charge, that is uh, we have to consider the area, okay. And the uniform charge density is given by rho S and the unit will be coulomb per meter square. And you assume that that this that sheet is marked in blue, uh, that in, in blue shade. So that is an infinite line, uh, infinite sheet of charge, and that is extending up to infinity. To calculate the uh, electric flux density d at a point p, what we are doing is to apply Gauss law. We have to consider a Gaussian surface. So. Uh, we are taking a rectangular box that is marked in red and that is cut symmetrically by that sheet of charge. Okay, so you are considering a rectangular box and we are assuming that the, that infinite sheet of charge that we are considering is cutting it symmetrically into two and it has two faces parallel to the sheet. Uh, parallel to the sheet, one is the top part and the other is the bottom part. So that is our uh, assumption and we are considering a rectangular coordinate and we are assuming that this sheet is in xy plane. Okay, so xy plane means the uh, perpendicular component will be, it will be az. Similarly, when we consider this uh, rectangular box also d, vector d has only z component, d z a, a z. Okay, this will also be having only the z component because it is projected perpendicular to the plane. Okay, the plane is xy plane. So, both the uh, area vector as well as d vector will be both uh, perpendicular to the plane that will be in the z component. Now, what we have to do is we have to apply the Gauss law. So, again Gauss law, applying the Gauss law, psi is equal to q enclosed. Here, the charge density is given by rho s and the unit will be coulomb per meter square. When it was a line charge, it was rho l coulomb per meter. Here it is rho s coulomb per meter square. Okay. So, rho s means uh, when, when we calculate q, rho s, it is surface charge density. So, you have to get the surface integral of ds. Okay, so this we have to do and we are assuming that the area of the rectangular box that is taken as you are just assuming instead of integrating and getting the correct value, you are assuming it to be capital A. So, instead of integrating, you are writing it as rho, rho s into that is uh, you have to integrate the top part as well as bottom part. So, it will be rho s into a representing the top part plus rho s into same area, a representing the bottom part. Area is same in both cases, both top and bottom, the area is a. So, this can be written as 2 rho s into a. Okay, this means we are assuming that the area is a and we are not trying to find out the exact value of area as that is not required. Okay, and then calculating psi, you get surface integral of d rho, it's not d rho, d z, a z dot, area again you are taking it as a, because we are considering that small area. Okay, that is a dot a a z. Okay, again x y plane, so it will be a z itself. So, on integrating you get d z a will be 2 rho s a. So, that is why we, we took the assumption of the area as A because it is coming in both uh, sides where, whether when we take the surface integral of D as well as we take the uh, integral uh, of volume charge density, uh, surface charge density, you need A itself. So, you assumed it to be A. So, now you get uh, Ds as Dz 
is 2 rho s. So, flux density vector d will be 2 rho s and along unit vector a z. And electric field vector e will be 2 rho s by epsilon in the unit vector a z. This epsilon is permittivity and if it is free space you can put it as epsilon 0. Epsilon permittivity is epsilon, z, epsilon 0 into epsilon r where epsilon r is relative permittivity and in free space epsilon r is 1 and you take epsilon as epsilon 0. If it is any other medium to, you take it as epsilon 0 into epsilon r. So, this is how we calculated the electric field intensity and flux density of a po at a point due to an infinite sheet of charge with the charge density rho s coulomb per meter square. So, in the last uh, cases where one was the uniform line charge then an infinite sheet of charge. So, considering charge density in unit length then unit area and this is the third case that is we are considering a sphere it is marked in red we are considering a sphere of radius small letter a okay that is considered as a uniform charge and the charge density is given by rho v that is volume charge density and the unit is coulomb per meter cube. So, rho v means it is a charge present in a unit volume. Rho v coulomb per meter cube. And now again we have to find the d and e that is flux density and electric field, uh, field intensity at a point p distant r from it. Okay. So, that is the case that we are handling and as it is a, a the charge is distributed along a sphere again to apply Gauss law first you have to identify a Gaussian surface and this it is evident that it will be a spherical surface but when we construct the Gaussian surface we need to consider it in two ways that means first case will be when the R value is less than or equal to A and the second case is when R greater than or equal to A. Okay, so that is the only difference in the three cases. So, again applying Gauss law, you get psi is equal to Q enclosed. So that is case. So, first case we are considering R less than or equal to A. So, that is A is constant. That is we are assuming that the volume charge uh, is concentrated along a sphere with radius a. So, why we are considering it as two cases because when we take r less than a, it is a point inside that charge distribution and when r is greater than a, the point that we are considering is outside the charge distribution. That is why we are taking it in two different ways. So, first case when the point is inside the charge distribution that is we are taking a point P distant r from the origin and it is less than a the charge distribution. So, in that case, psi means psi that is equal to it is surface integral of dr a r dot ds. ds means it will be in the theta phi plane. So, it will be r d theta and r sin theta d phi into unit vector a r theta phi plane so d s is taken like this so this part is vector d and this part is vector d s d s is in theta phi plane so we take r d theta and r sin theta d phi you take d s and it is in which the direction always the area vector is perpendicular to that plane so theta phi plane means the unit vector will be in r direction so this is how you should take psi and again as explained in last video also this we need not integrate ok even if you integrate by giving the limit phi from 0 to 2 pi and theta from 0 to pi you will be getting the same answer but you already know for a sphere the area will be when you consider the whole area it will be 4 pi r square. So we take this as dr into 4 pi r square no need to 
uh, integrate it. So dr into 4 pi r square. And now when q enclosed, it is again volume integral of rho v dv. Again for dv, what you have to do is r square sin theta dr d theta d phi. You have you can apply all the limits, but no need. You already know the volume of a sphere, so you can directly substitute as rho v as 4 by 3 pi r cube. Okay, here uh, both are, r is less than a. So when r is less than a, the volume, the charge within that area is not the whole charge, only that enclosed by that smaller cylinder. So you take it as rho v into 4 by 3 pi r cube. So charge is given by this rho v into 4 by 3 pi r cube and electric flux is given by dr into 4 pi r square. Now equating both you get dr 4 pi r square 4 by 3 which will get cancelled and it will be uh, it will be rho v r by 3. This is case 1. I am discussing case 1 when r less than or equal to a. So vector d will be rho v into r by 3 ar and vector e will be rho v by epsilon r by 3 unit vector ar. Now we will consider the second case. Second case is when r is greater than a that is charge distribution is still a and we are considering a point outside that charge. So case 2 when r greater than or equal to a same applying Gauss law psi is equal to q and psi is also the same case surface integral of dr ar dot ds and it will be ar itself. ds again you are applying uh, limits to theta and phi you will be getting as we are considering a sphere area will be 4 pi r square and we are taking a point r itself so same value dr into 4 pi r square so this will be the value in left side but q will be there is a difference in q because charge is only till the value a you are taking a point outside that doesn't mean that charge is in this part so when you take uh, Q, it will be the volume integral of rho V and dV, you apply the limit say R square sin theta dr d theta d phi and applying the limit R is equal to, earlier we take it as 0 to R itself but here it is only till A. That is the only difference. Then again phi varying from 0 to 2 pi, theta is varying from 0 to pi. Last case it was 0 to R but here it is 0 to A because we are taking a point outside A and charge is only till A that is the only difference. So here when you equate you get dr into 4 pi r square will be equal to rho v into you know the volume uh, equation 4 by 3 pi r cube but here instead of R it is A so it will be 4 by 3 pi a cube. Now equating you get dr will be rho v into a cube divided by 3 r square. So vector d will be rho v into a cube divided by 3 r square unit vector ar and corresponding electric field intensity will be you have to divide by epsilon rho v by 3 epsilon not r square assuming free space 3 epsilon not r square into a cube into unit vector ar. If it is not a uh, free space you can give it as epsilon. So this is the answer. This is due to uniformly charged sphere of radius a. So in this case you uh, do it with the two cases. One is when r less than or equal to a and the second case when r greater than or equal to a.